Motor Week is made possible by Tire Rack. You know, about this time every year, a young man's fancy turns to thoughts of uh, cars, of course. So we thought we'd look in at three over-the-hill teenagers engaged in their favorite pastime, arguing about their cars. Round, round, get around, I get around, get around, round, round, I get around, get around, round. Hi, what do you have? Yeah, a burger, fries, and a Coke. And my Mustang GT will eat that Trans Am for lunch. Oh, yeah? Isn't that Mustang an F-O-R-D as in found on road dead? Hey, that's first on race day. What a crock. This new IROC Camaro blow you both into the weeds. Bold talk. Let me show you what's under the hood of this Pontiac. This is your basic high output, 305 cubic inch, 190 horsepower, big four-barreled screamer. It's made into a five-speed manual. That's five gears, no waiting. You may also feast your eyes on 16-inch wheels with 245 50 VR rated Goodyear Gator backs, huge sway bars, and four-wheel disc brakes to stop this 3,360-pound tin Indian. Big deal. My Mustang has Gator backs too. 225 60s mounted on 15-inch rims, any sway bars the size of sewer pipes, not to mention disc brakes up front. So don't mention them. Of course, under the hood, hot rodder heaven. The five-speed manual transmission gets its power from Fomoco's 302 cubic inch, 210 horsepower motor with all the goodies. Tube headers, high lift roller cam, and a four barrel holly big enough to inhale Cleveland. All in a light 3,180 pound package. Carburetors, merely carburetors. Hey, it's the 80s. Haven't you guys ever heard of fuel injection? This is five liters of tuned port injected small block Chevy that punches out 215 horsepower. And it's made into the slickest four-speed automatic surf city has ever seen. And if you want to go fast in the corners, I'd rather eat worms than ride in a Chevy. Like I said, if you want to go fast in the corners, my IROC also sports 245 50VR 16 Gatorbacks and four-wheel disc brakes, plus larger anti-sway bars and a lower center of gravity than the standard Z28. In short, a 3,580-pound slot car. There's only one place to settle this, the, the racetrack. So it's the 190-horsepower, five-speed Firebird Trans Am, the 210-horsepower, five-speed Mustang GT, and the 215-horsepower, four-speed automatic Camaro IROC Z. Off to the first stop of our muscle car matchup at Monrovia, Maryland, 7580 Dragaway, where the first two cars to face off were General Motors' finest, the IROC Z and the Trans Am. Now off the line, the Fuely IROC with better bottom end torque and traction takes the Trans Am. But by mid track, the freer revving Trans Am edges up and past the IROC Z and takes the light with a quarter mile time of 14.7 seconds at 89 miles per hour, one tenth of a second quicker than Chevy's best. And full of confidence, the old Trans Am now must take on Dearborn's damnedest. Down go the lights, and look out, because the lightweight Mustang GT with excellent Eagle Gator back traction beats the 10 Indian at its own game. The Mustang stampedes out of the gate and pulls away by mid-track. At the finish, it's Ford's pony car by four car lengths to a tune of 14.3 seconds at 92 miles per hour. So when the tire smoke cleared, the two fastest cars had... Yeah. Carburetors! Merely carburetors! So there. The first on race day Mustang was first, followed by the Trans Am, which in turn neatly edged out the Camaro IROC Z. But since all bad things take a turn for the better, our three bad machines take off for the twisting turns and high banks of Pennsylvania's Pocono International Raceway. Okay, so this isn't Dead Man's Curve, but we did set up a special two-mile course using both high bank and the long straights of the trioval and a very tight infield road course. 
but we thought we'd limber up first with matched high-speed straightaway runs between the high banks. Here again, the Mustang ran away with a scorching 127 miles per hour. Next fastest was the Chevy IROC, held back only by its automatic and driver fear to the tune of 123 miles per hour. The less powerful Trans Am almost matched the IROC Z thanks to its slippery body and manual transmission. Top speed was 122. Absolute top speed for all these cars is over 130. From there, it was on to the handling course. First up, the Mustang, looking like the late Steve McQueen's own bullet machine on a busy day. Its powerful motor, light rear end, and slightly dated chassis produced plenty of throttle-induced oversteer. Yet, helped by the Coney gas struts and shocks and variable rate springs, the Mustang thunders around the high banks and straights and slugs it out on the tight turns to produce a very fast average lap speed of 73.5 miles per hour. It may be all over the track, but it is fast. Next up is our Indian uprising from Pontiac, so look out, Mustang. The huge gator backs and more sophisticated chassis make this one running grave. Even without the latest in gas shocks, this year's larger stabilizer bars meant handling was stable and neutral in tight turns with no unnecessary dramatics. This Trans Am goes where it's pointed. And as it charged past the timers, it corralled the Mustang's time two tenths of a second quicker with an average speed of 73.7. But at this point, Chevrolet had a surprise of its own. With more weight and an automatic transmission, the IROC Z should have had a disadvantage here but it politely dusted off both the Mustang and Trans Am. With its Mustang-like bottom-end power curve and a more finely tuned chassis than the Trans Am, the IROC was fast and mean. With no fuss, no muss, and a super stiff front end and Bilstein gas shocks at the rear, the IROC Z corners hard, brakes quickly, and really hauls the mail. And as the Chevy contingent cheered, the IROC Z ran an incredible nine tenths of a second quicker than the Trans Am and over one full second faster than the Mustang with an average lap speed of 74.4 miles per hour. So what did this prove? Well, that cars are like beer. It's all a matter of taste. Without a doubt, the Mustang is the fastest in acceleration and top end. Besides that, it has the lowest base price at $10,224 but it can be a real challenge in the turns. On the other hand, the IROC Z is a lot like its big Chevy brother, the Corvette. Fast and sophisticated, but also more expensive. Base price, $12,635. Between the two comes the surprising compromise, Pontiac's Firebird Trans Am. Fast, almost like the Mustang, yet sophisticated in handling, almost like the IROC Z. It's also priced between the others at 11983 So I guess we're still not sure who builds the ultimate factory muscle car. It's an argument that's been going on now for over 20 years. And like the notion of eternal youth, we hope it's a debate that never ends. <laughs>